Welcome to Resiliency Radio, your go-to podcast for the most cutting-edge insights in functional and integrative medicine. I'm your host, Dr. Jill, and in each episode, we delve into the heart of healing and personal transformation. Join us as we connect with renowned experts, thought leaders, and innovators who are at the forefront of medical research and practice, empowering you with knowledge and inspiration, aiding you on your journey to optimal health. Guys, it's out. I am so excited to be able to share with you a special episode today about the documentary that's been in the works for over three years. And today, my special guests, Burke and Alyssa Larson, uh, were part of this process. So we're going to dive deep into what it was like to film the movie, what it was like to share our lives on film and on screen, and just really the heart of healing. What we want to do is empower you uh, to, in your suffering, in your difficulties, uh, whether it's family, friends, or whatever, to know that you're not alone. And I think we even started by talking about that briefly before we got on this recording, just how powerful it is to know that you're not alone in suffering. And I think now more than ever before with phones, we feel connected. I heard Esther Perel talk about the other day, we have thousands of friends, but no one to feed our dog when we're gone, right? Like this practical kind of like connection with people. So first of all, just welcome uh, Burke and Alyssa, and thank you for taking the time to be here. Welcome. How are you? Doing well, and I am so excited to dive in. So we're going to show people a little clip, Burke. Um, you, this will take you back. Um, so right now, I'm just going to uh, sh stop, and we'll share a clip, and then we'll dive in, because I think that'll frame our discussion. We found Dr. Jill sort of happenstance. I walked into her office, met with her for a few minutes, and went, OK, this is some. this is a whole nother level of doctor. 16 years old, at spring break, I ended up with horrific sores in the back of my throat. And we went into the Vail Hospital, and they said, you most likely have mono. Here's some stuff to help you take care of it, go home, rest. And it just kept getting worse. By the end of the summer, my dad had to carry me into Children's Hospital. I'd lost so much weight. I think I was around 115 pounds. Crohn's, Bichette's, MS, early onset Parkinson's, all that came up negative. And I mean, we were trying anything and everything, and nothing, nothing is doing anything. And then I spent the next decades with no answers. Wow. <laughs> I still see that and I get so tore up, Burke, because you are the prototype for so many people out there that are suffering and they're suffering silently or their spouses don't believe them. Thank God you have Alyssa. <laughs> or, or they're yeah. just, right? The medical gaslighting. Let's just talk about that first of like, how did it feel for those decades, literally, to go to doctor after doctor after doctor, then maybe finally give up after a while, like that anyone would ever believe you. Can you remember back to how was it to feel sick and you knew something was wrong and yet no one was giving you answers? Yeah, I mean, it's horrific. And I, I can't imagine how many people also deal with that. And from my point of view, I started at 16 pretty pretty young, don't, don't have a big voice of advocacy behind me. And so I'm looking at all these doctors thinking, you know, hey guys, I've got a giant mess on my hands. I'm in horrific pain. I mouth ulcers out. I can't, I can't function. I'm I've dropped out of ski racing. I've dropped out of bike racing. I've dropped out of life. I'm, I'm being handed pain medicine and stuff to spray down my mouth to function in high school. And um, doctors are, I, the, the best ones were the ones that looked at me and said, you know, I don't think I can help you. The ones that I had some trouble with were ones that meant well, likely, but I didn't want to hear the story, didn't want to dip, dive any further. I, I'm, I guess I'm not really putting this into words very well. Um, I, I, I was alone and I had parents that loved me, adored me, I, I, family, all of that. 
well-to-do family thankfully was not uh, trying to find how we were going to figure out how to go to the next doctor and pay for it but zero answers i was in the children's hospital at 16 like i said in the clip there at 115 pounds six foot six one um coming out of starting to ski race around the country and then fast forward a number of months and my dad is literally carrying me in at 115 pounds to children's hospital we're there for 10 days panels and panels and panels being run nothing absolutely nothing I mean, they can't find anything wrong. Effectively, I'm a healthy person, yeah. but I, 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 I'm nuked. I'm in trouble. And they're saying, we're going to put a port in you to feed you, or you got to start feeding yourself. And I had these horrible mouth sores. That was sort of the giant thing that was the most horrific. There was a bunch of other fun stuff that was occurring too. Um, and I thought, no way at 16, are you going to send me back to high school? And I'm going to be feeding you. <laughs> so I started spraying my mouth down with benzocaine, this stuff that you prep your mouth before the dentist gives you the big shot, like the little stuff uh, that they swab on. And, and so that became my best friend for yeah. decades. Uh, wow. And, and I, um, I think, Brooke, the, the thing that you're saying here is so, so common because people so often go and how, first of all, I want to frame that you were on your way to become a, like a world-class skier, like you had been training and doing. So this is not just, I mean, you truly were not only an athlete, but on your way. And, and this obviously kind of changed things for you. Um, and then, like you said, you had resources, you had family, you had so much that it, maybe even up some other people don't have. And even so- it didn't matter, did it? Because you didn't have the answers to get to the healing or get to the root cause <laughs> of what was going on. Yep. Yeah. And again, told me to stop high school, told me to not go to college. Uh, I got into CU Boulder, finished high school and did it in horrific condition thinking you nobody can give me an answer or even close or, or nothing. So I am just going to force my way through this I'm going to do this on my own. I, I know that. Yeah. You know. I, I would guess a lot of people are, I know. I mean, I, I, I get a phone call. I haven't had a talk with a, a new construction project I've got going with family up here and the owner's rep heard out this. And then he said, you know what, God, I've got somebody that has, has Lyme or thinks they have Lyme and off goes this. And then we end up talking and, um, up losing a little bit of train of thought but well let's fast forward to when we met because you had gone through all these decades of like the mysterious illness nothing really and and what I hear you saying is you literally were like first of all this is one thing I admire in you you were just like no matter what I've got to take care of myself I've got to push through it's a common story to me too sure. and, and no one's really going to understand and no one's really going to know so I'm just going to have to either fake it or push through or whatever so there's a sense of resilience that you've had that has gotten you through but even so you were suffering you were suffering alone and I think from what you've told me is you kind of felt like you had to give up on someone really getting you. Um, let's fast forward yeah. first to meeting Alyssa, because that's just so powerful in your story, your, your story, when you met and, and Alyssa, I'd like to hear your side of it too. How did that play into a chronic illness and finally finding someone that you could kind of start to share your journey with and not hide it, right? Yeah. And that was the first time that I, I wasn't so yeah, effectively I tricked her into marriage. Not sure how I got that one accomplished with his, with his, as horrible as I was, yeah. spraying my mouth down, dating, and then marrying, and then. So you were trying to hide the fact of all the suffering and illness. I was embarrassed, and yeah, yeah I'm embarrassed. I don't know what it is. I, nobody can tell me what's going on. I, and half the doc, docs are docs are sort of insinuating you're, you're doing something to yourself or you've caused this yourself or you know a, a myriad of just things you're like what and now I would be a little more vocal but as a young guy and you know when you're in the midst of it midst of it or mix of it um not a lot and I, yeah you don't know exactly what to say so Alyssa comes along how did you guys meet tell us a quick story of how that happened yeah, you know. <laughs> Um, our roommates were dating. They had been dating for about a year. So we met the summer before, but, um, I was dating somebody at the time. And I remember meeting him after he had just come home from his family lake house for like three weeks. So his hair was blonde. He was all tan. And I thought, Oh, he's good looking. 
and then just went on and it was probably nine or 10 months later, um, closing weekend in Vail, my roommate said, we're going to go up and, and party and ski for closing weekend. And I had just broken up with this other guy a week before. And so we came up to Vail and, um, they're like, Oh, remember Burke, he's coming over later. And he was helping his family move down in Genesee golden. So when and we went over to somebody else's condo to kind of kick off the night. He came there after having moved his parents in no power because there was a giant snowstorm the night before. And he, he, instead of going home and going to sleep, again, resilience, right? Something drew him to the party. He came to this condo and came in and he looked totally different because it was the end of the winter. His hair was brown. And, you know, his skin was a little bit lighter. And I thought, oh, okay, well, we spent the whole night talking. And because we had just gotten out of non-communicative relationships, we uh -huh. said everything. We stayed up all night long talking and said everything. And it was just kind of laid the foundation for not not the illness, yeah. but every, everything else about what we wanted in a relationship and what we didn't want. Um, I so knew right then. I'm like, yep, this is it. And uh -huh. <laughs> I love that. I think I'd heard that before, but like, even now it's just so powerful because once again, it's funny before this podcast, I thought, what is the real message here? And I think at the core, it's people want to be seen and heard. And whether you're out there suffering with an unexplained illness or your family member is, or you, you know, the most powerful feedback we heard after the movie was two or three spouses of someone who's been suffering a long time came up to us and said, you know what, there's been a time when I was almost ready to leave or divorce this person because I thought they were just like, what is wrong with them, right? And, uh, and, what, and that's fair to them too. Like right, they, right? Know, <laughs> we had a firefighter friend and he would come back from her friend acquaintance that asked for help. And Alyssa got to talk to the wife and he would come back from a 48 hour shift or whatever the firefighters do. We can, we can talk to Mr. Sutter on the, on the other side of this, you'll get that. Um, he's an acquaintance up here or was up here. Um, but yeah, he'd come back and then, you know, she's like, I've got the kids and he's like, he goes for the couch and he can't do anything. Um, and I believe it was, was Lyme, Lyme's as well. And Alyssa got a chance to sort of say, give him a chance and then let's see if we can help you. And, um, I mean, uh, yeah, not having the support and knowing that it's so important in illness, isn't it? Because like otherwise people isolate and then being alone is that, so you guys had this conversation and it sounds like just from that, you knew like, this is the kind of woman that's going to listen to me. And then I, I'm guessing there was something yeah. in your heart thinking, maybe I could actually share my whole life and all the suffering. So then eventually, I remember you tell me, Alyssa, like you would see like these, you know, some of the, like the, the mouth and stuff, you started to see what was really happening behind the scenes. And then how did it actually come to the conversation of really like how much suffering you were in Burke with her? Yeah. Yeah. She totally yeah. has a better idea I mean, of how exactly it unfolded, but we spent every weekend together and then during the week he after could do, we yeah. After the day we met and then during, cause I was in Denver, he was in Vail. And during the week, he would just do whatever he needed to do to recover. But I didn't see any of the illness on the weekends. We partied. We went to bars with friends. We did the Kentucky Derby. We dressed up like nothing. I It was normal, yeah. right? A normal dating relationship. And then um, I finally decided uh, I was going to move up here to be with him. And um once I actually moved, which is almost 14 years ago, I moved in with him. And that's really when I started to see more and more. And it was still slow, but um, it was probably over the course of six months after we moved in together that I could see something was wrong. And then finally, you started to open up more too, because we were in the same space. And you can't hide yeah. everything then when no. like the suffering days. And on this yeah. journey, for those like you, like me, Lyme, mold, toxicity, all these things, there is this very roller coaster ride of you can have a good day. And that's where people can't believe totally. it. You can show up so well. Even for me, people think I'm out there, you know, flying around, speaking, doing all this stuff. And I have these still rough days and, and they don't see that, right? And like oh, yeah, part of this is... Okay. Yeah, this is yeah. like sharing. So obviously you shared and then, but this journey was still like not a lot of answers for many more years, right? No, no, right. 
I, I well, think we started in with some of the doctors we knew and and then Alyssa and her personality, she effectively just took it over and was like, this is You're not. like the beautiful bulldog. I remember and talking I, on the phone. You're like, you know, and it was awesome. Like, I respect that so much. And we, like, no, there, I do not take no for an answer. Yeah. Our first stop with him, who I'm grateful because it ultimately led us to you real quickly. Um, and then what I've said, you, you've saved my life, both of you. Um, yeah, we, it's, it, it, he said, don't come back. Um, or I'm sorry, please don't bring Alyssa and she can't be a part of this because she was like, we talked about that last time. Let's move on. What else? And there were no answers. And then I was being accused of, yeah, being accused of doing things that made me, that I, that, how do I know? How would I have known? But being accused of doing things that were made me sick and that I, this was my fault. And I'm like, I, you know, and she's going, no. <laughs> and then Good for you, Alyssa, because what happens, Burke, is there's this gaslighting. Let's just talk about that. Because what, what happens yeah, you said that. Right. is this uh, gaslighting is this confusion because someone alters your perception of reality. So you're suffering, you know, something's wrong and you go into a doctor who you respect and think, okay, they're trained to help diagnose and treat me. And if over and over again, you get told it's all in your head. You're making this up. You're part of the problem. You need an antidepressant, which is real common, right? It's just all your mood or you're depressed or something, right? And when you get told that, there's this piece of you that starts to be like, well, maybe they know better than me. And I think one of the big themes of the movie was like trusting our intuition, trusting our, our internal self, our spirit that knows what's right and wrong and what's true for us and actually advocating. And what happened for you is you outsourced advocacy to Alyssa. And again, now you've really grown in that. And thank God for her because she came in at a time when you couldn't advocate for yourself anymore after being beaten down and beaten down and beaten down. And then here comes Alyssa like, no, let me be your advocate. Like I can totally see how that was so powerful. Um, Alyssa, how was that for you? Like going to doctors and like you saw you like, he's not okay. And, and we yeah. need answers. How did that feel for you? I was just frustrated. And so I just stopped them in their tracks and said, you already said that last time. And here we are the next time. And it's not helping. Or you already suggested that we tried it. It did nothing. You know, what else? What else? And after I think six months of that, you know, I did, I got told that, um, I'm not welcome on the next call because I undermine the doctor. And I said, have a nice day. We're done. Yeah. <laughs> and I called you. Good for you. I think that's and this was a, it was a very well-respected doctor yeah. of the family. That's why we started there. He had helped a, his, you know, family through some other things and really helped them over the years for a long time. So we thought that would be a great place to start. And it really was because he connected us with you you know, there's synchronicities in that. And yeah, I don't even remember how I do remember sitting in my old office that ended yeah. up having water damage. That was the place where we first yeah. met that ended up hurting me with mold and all long story there. But, um, but I remember really like, I mean, first of all, you guys are so likable and so beautiful. And I could see also just the, it's so neat to have um, a couple come in and you know, like they're, they're this unit and they're there to be supportive for one another. Cause so often in this illness, like as you said, Burke, she saved your life because she was part of that like support network to come in. And then I want to give you credit too, because your resilience, your persistence, you've been the one to suffer through this. Um, do you guys remember that first visit at all? Oh, <laughs> I, I can mean, feel like, it. Like, like the couch, yeah. exactly yeah. the side. Where you I, were sitting. And yeah. you're done. Through the tea, and yeah. We had one earlier visit with you that was sort of a, hey, go see Dr. Jill. Let's see if we can get... Uh, not without getting into too much detail if we can get some some panels run and she'll help you out with that and I, I, are we one of your longer standing patients yes okay anyway. so <laughs> yeah. I, it was er earlier on because I, I don't know. we had I, said you just moved it was here. 2011 or 12, right because uh because 2010 was when I moved so I bet it was 2000 maybe 12 13 it was a, it was it was earlier on because for That's lots going of on a decade. <laughs> but we, we went back to the gentleman and then had this, you know, she's not welcome. And then we went and I am like, 
that gal that we saw that one time had like an ounce of compassion, even though you were trying to respect the other gentleman's. Oh yeah. You could tell you wanted to say some stuff. And so we got an appointment that we ended up in your office. And I mean, for the first time I told doc, I told you a doctor, physician, somebody going to help me everything. Yeah. And I held so much back because there was so much judgment and so much BS. And I just didn't, I don't want to knock a bunch of doctors. There's a lot of people that mean well. And again, like I said, the one that what had one that was like, or heard my story and was like, I don't think I can do anything to you. I mean, I swear I could have high fived them and been like, that's the honestly, best thing. Honestly, right. The honesty. Oh, <laughs> it was huge, which, and I understand the want to get, so we got with you and I mean, we're in tears, like. I'm shaking. I mean, I, we had scripts when we went in there because I didn't trust, I, I didn't trust I was not going to get blamed for being sick. Eric, you have been other, traumatized yeah. and beat down. Like, let me just say how it is. You had been, you had PTSD and you had been completely traumatized by the medical system. And, and, I, you know, and I have to say that because there's people listening who feel the same way and who have yep. been, and, and the truth is like that space of unconditional acceptance and like, tell me your story is where it starts the healing, right? And you did that for us. So you gave that space right then and there. And I, somehow with the brief interaction we had before, I felt like that is the person we need to talk to, whether she has a clue or has all the answers or has nothing. I think this person will actually listen to me as a doctor, physician. And you did. And we got through it and you looked at me at, and there's was quite the, I mean, it's seared into my brain that, mm -hmm. I mean, that's a decade ago. Right. I, I was just thinking, it's 12 years ago. So 12 okay. years ago, oh my gosh. I, I mean, I can remember the feelings, the emotions, the couch we were sitting on, the angle of it, where you were sitting, your test kits behind you, like, I mean, everything. And then you looked at me and said, I think I know what this is, or I know what this is. And I mean, I'm like, um, are we is this crazy or I didn't know whether to cry or walk out and be like she's gone crazy and it is the one time I have ever said you said we need to test you for Lyme's disease Lyme disease I call it Lyme with Lyme's we have to test you for Lyme disease and and that was your that was your thought going and I'm I'm thinking you know another several thousand dollar test great and I'm like, I'm not sure. And you effectively looked at me and said, no, you're, you're going to do this. And in a very kind, amazing way. And I went, yep, okay. Wow. We got the test results back. It pinged hot. Yes. And you sort of went through that with us. And there was still a bit of this, okay, great. Like we've heard this a million times. You know, we think it's this, we think it's that. And I'd say it took us a little bit to actually sort of let it set in. And then we Googled it one night in bail. And I mean, the symptoms slammed. Like you go ever have those points in your life where you go into a twilight zone and you're like, just everything slows down. Like in the movies, everything slowed down. And I'm like, yep, yep, uh, yep, yep. Okay. This is, uh, this is a hundred percent. It. This is two decades, not quite two decades of horrificness that is summed up. I mean, Google didn't exist when we started. So, um, and that's when we, that, that was huge. And I mean, I'm in tears. We're staring at this. And then, then y'all went to work. Well, you just that the validation. That. And I'll tell you from my perspective, it's interesting. And this is where like part of the movie too, is like bringing in science and also faith and intuition and like all these things together. Because the truth is like, if I had just purely clinically, academically, analytically looked at the situation, I don't know that I would have jumped to Lyme, but there was a deep intuition because what I've seen, and for those listening, if you're out there and suffering, most of the complex chronic illness is toxic load. That could be like mold exposure, metal exposure, some toxin in our environment that you may not see or feel, but it's just slowly taking you down and infectious burden. So things that we've been exposed to maybe years ago, even like if, if I always say this example, because people get it, chicken pox, we've all had chicken pox, most of us. And then when we get shingles, when we're 70 or 80, when are we get, that's the same virus from decades earlier that pops up when we have a weakened immune system. And so when I see the complex chronic illness like you, and there's some clues like fatigue, brain fog, joint pain, um, or just neurological things that don't make a lot of sense, like one-sided neurological symptoms, or, um, you know, there's a whole number, number of things, but those kinds of, uh, th cases, of those, 
<laughs> yeah, right. And again, there's a list could go on and on often end up being these old infections that maybe we got. And here's an example that's interesting too. You're in Vail, you're in Colorado, right? There's a lot of docs that are like, Lyme doesn't exist in Colorado, but that's not I true. I them say it to me straight yeah. to my face. And I yeah. still have some even friends that are like, but. Yeah. And I think we find uh, found a tick form of lapsing fever, maybe some other, because often what happens is there's other types of ticks and other types of infections. And it's usually uh, a conglomeration or a mix of things. But it's interesting, what I was going to say from that perspective, I had to jump from analytical mind who didn't really know that, I mean, I just listened to your symptoms, that was it. And to my intuition of like, I think this is Lyme, and then actually be brave enough to tell you when I wasn't sure, right? Like I wasn't positive, yeah. but, um, and then the testing, the really good testing is expensive. And this is always a conversation I have because I'm like, oh, I'm so sorry. It's going it, to, this testing starts at like $1,500, but it's so worth it to have the answer. And with that test, I know that I'm going to have really good data to hang our future plan on. So I remember being there too. And this is way back nowadays. I have no problem being like, let's do this test. You need to do it right away. And I'm really confident, just like your confidence was low. That was at the beginning of my functional medicine practice here in Colorado. And I would say my confidence was pretty low too. And I was like, oh guys, can we test? But again, we came together and it was perfect how it worked out. We did. You did you did get the guts up to be like, no, you're doing this to yeah. <laughs> I think I, I would, have that again that's that interesting. And I, on the one friggin' test, which, um, but you're right about, yeah. And, and it's way more just for those of you listening. It's not just that it's just that infection. It's way bigger than that. Cause there's inflammation, in the immune system, sure. there's ongoing dysfunction. And so, so many things Burke and anyone else suffering out there that it's not just like a one size fits all, but the core was that we had something that really made sense to put the whole picture into, and then something to even target to get you you know, functioning. Now I want to shift just a little bit because when we first came, it's, this is also kind of a divine thing because um, I remember when Dan and Aaron uh, came and we were talking about the movie and we said, we need some patient stories. We really need want to follow some people who've been through this in functional medicine. Who do we, you know, and of all the thousands of patients, I can't remember exactly how you guys came to mind, but um, obviously sharing your life journey, sharing the patient doctor relationship is super personal and super intimate. And you guys were so beautiful at sharing that. But how did it first come? How did it feel when we first came to you and said, hey, do you want to be part of a documentary and share your journey? Was it scary? Was it exciting? Was it, were you apprehensive in the beginning? How did it feel? I think, yes, to all of what you just said. Mostly, uh, yeah, we had to have a little talk about it. Um, the answer was yes right away. The second force sort of, what are we doing or getting into? Uh -huh. And putting it out there and number of years earlier, I would have said unconditionally, no, I don't need anybody else knowing my history. I don't need repercussions. I don't need people coming after me I, it, it, for false diagnosis or not believing in line, whatever it may be. So 100%, it was yes. And then had to go through sort of the emotions of, are we, are we good with this? And I think you asked me several times, like, good really yeah. good with this like you, you haven't been good with sharing this in the past uh, outside of people yeah. need need and help and small settings and stuff like that um and then enter the beginning stages of talking about this and starting to film and stuff and uh, i mean talk about a cathartic release i mean i i mean i'm in tears the whole frigging thing they had to we have to put me back together i'm sure you edited out <laughs> A ton of that just to make it make sense but um so that answers your question sometimes. yeah and I wonder that if, I didn't anticipate this because it was the same for me Bark here I'm like showing my life and I we joked in a text about you know the vulnerability that we both show all of us show in the film and um I would joke about the ugly cry scene which is a scene that they didn't have in the first multiple drafts and then finally they're like joe we got to put this in i'm like oh <laughs> that's the stuff that i mean that's where people right. hit connect and that's where they're like oh i can i can do i can do this or i whatever pushes forward and right like that's our oh, right to encourage and inspire but what i want to ask too is this is where i think is we're both going to is the filming itself was so healing wasn't it to actually like i think part of healing is like how can we be our most authentic self and like really share? Because the more we share with the world, the truth, we're not unique and we're not the only ones who've ever suffered. And all of a sudden we become common with those people out there. And not only do we feel the love and support, but we feel free because we're fully able to share every bit of ourself. 
And how did that feel like as it was finally happening? Did you feel like that was a little tiny piece of the healing too? I mean, that was like the last 10% of what I needed to do with my journey. And there's always a journey, I think, going on, no matter whether you're the picture of health or not, everybody's got something they're working on. And so I'll continue to, but 100% that filming of that, well, and I think we've had some conversations along the time, along the lines with the movie and filming and after and seeing it was huge. And then watching it at Family Lake House uh, in Idaho with on a MacBook Pro at the table outside with the giant lake out and everybody in swimsuits in the evening. And I mean, is that when you first saw it, the final cut? Yeah, first saw it with the family and. I mean, they they all knew the journey um, better than anybody, but seeing that, I mean, people in tears, parents in tears, but for me to let that out and sort of put that on paper, film, yeah. um, digital, uh, it was, I mean, I cried through the whole freaking thing. The biggest release, I mean, it jumped me far forward in healing big time and it was such a release yeah yeah like I said cathartic I don't know the words that are escaping no, me that's, that's perfect it's so I can just see you there with your family I had the same experience Burke I mean my family knows me loves me and amazing and as I've shared with you know my all of my siblings and my parents and everybody it's been so powerful to open up conversations and for them to really, you know how it is, like they see you as son or brother, or like there's a role you've played your whole life. And especially when you're someone who's strong and resilient, doesn't complain hard, like we have a lot of similarities, this work ethic and this kind of thing that you brought through life that was, I always think that was a thing that saved us, but it also created a little distance because we had to show, oh, you. right, take care. And we didn't ever either ask for help or think Ooh. that we were worthy of help. And so all of a sudden shifting and showing our family first and then the world <laughs> um, that deep vulnerability, like, and people are just like, oh my gosh, I had no idea. Even my own family, to some extent, some of them were like, I didn't realize that piece was so hard for you, right? That, that hit exactly with the family, with us, even between us a little bit. Um, I mean, we watched it together first. First, just the two okay, of us. yeah. How was that? But it was at it was at, the at that lake house table. It was up in forget okay uh, in so the anyway, evening. But minor point. It the when we went to the lake house last summer, we went for two weeks, which was the first time we ever went for that long. Brought the dogs. Mm -hmm. Bergson just started this huge transition, and we watched the movie we talk a lot about it. We were up late that night. And then when we did it with the family at the table, the dinner table, your mom got up from the outside. She's real strong willed as well. And usually is fine about everything and scooted herself in between me and his sister and held on to both of our hands the whole time because she didn't know what she was going to find out. And she, it, you know, his story is shorter than your story in there, but it was, it was powerful. That is so, it just brings to mind, and I don't think I've shared this publicly, but I'm going to share it. We did a premiere and unfortunately you guys weren't able to come and that's why you watched it privately, but in, in Denver and my parents were there and I was kind of scared because I get so vulnerable about, um, I, kind of like you, I had amazing parents, like the best in the world. And yet just because we're human, like there's these little traumas in childhood, right? That like, and it's more about farm and being tough and it's not about my parents at all. But I was a little nervous because I love them so much and want to honor my dad and my mom, and especially my dad, who's like my hero. Um, and I sat in the theater beside my dad and I held his hand and he looked over at me and he said, Jill, I'm so sorry that I wasn't a better dad. And he was the perfect dad, right? Like he was so good. He didn't need to say that, but like that, that moment of connection between us and him saying that to me. And again, I, I felt like, oh my gosh, dad, you are the best. But in seeing my suffering, what happened in my parents was like, oh, they were amazing. But they also were like, oh, I'm sorry you had to suffer. And, and also I, because you and I hit it, it wasn't that they weren't there for us. It's that we didn't know how to ask for help, right? No. Friends, family, all of that, 100% that hit with my family was... Oh, I and my mom 
dad too, but mom was the one that was, I, I'm sorry. I'm I, like, I, I'm sorry. I'm sorry for all this and that. And I, and I looked at him, I'm like, we're all good. It's fine. Yeah. Like, we, we've, okay. we've done okay. And I, you know, I, and I, friends is uh, another tough one. And there's probably people out there that, you, you know, we, I, we've got the family and this and that. Another part is they told me I couldn't have kids or two kids that we're gonna have to go get here. And I remember that because and, I'm like, mm, and you my held out on me. Apparently, you felt the same as the other doctor that uh -huh. got us to you. Thank, thank God. Um, and then I found out in filming or in the movie that yes, you two felt that that was probably not going to happen either. So I spent, uh, yeah. Um, it's so exciting. I mean, yeah, yeah, I mean the first time I that? got the Christmas card with your kids, I was like. Oh, this is like, this is why I do what I do. Like that was, that was highlight of my year. <laughs> of course, I knew you guys were, yeah, that was um, awesome. Well, I, obviously this is transformational. I think one of my hope is that as people watch this, that they'll have conversations with their loved ones, with their partners, with their parents, with that. It'll just be a catalyst. What would you guys say is like your goal or hope or a desire in like, say a friend or a family member, or just someone you don't even know that might have undiagnosed chronic complex illness? What would be your deepest desire? And I'd like to hear from both of you in someone watching the film. I mean, what do you, what do you think? I, mean, I don't know. What to tell somebody and like how to go about it. I mean. Just like, okay, say they watch it. What would you hope to take away? <sighs> don't hide it as best you can. Yeah. Um, grab somebody and spill it out because I swear the friends I hid it from, I got so much shit from them for yeah. <laughs> coming out. Like you said, holding it together, held it together to go to work and then just was done. And they're like, come out, we're going skiing, we're going partying, we're doing this. And I'm like, nope. And they didn't know. And now that they've, they, I don't think they've seen the movie yet, but they've started to understand this a bit more as we've all matured yeah. too. Um, I don't know what to tell somebody. I do get, I'd say it was once a month. Now it's like once a quarter, maybe a couple times a year now that I get somebody that hears the story and is like, or can you talk to my friend? And mm -hmm. I just had a, a guy out of California. May have been someone you've seen. Um, just want to hear the story. And um, yeah, I'm not doing a great job of putting it into words, but find a way to connect with somebody, find a way to, you have podcasts now, you've got some of these things where you can hear some of this stuff. When we started this journey, I it, I, would, I literally had friend, dear friends that were like sick boy when I was in high school and that's just what they called me. And honestly, it was their way of saying, I got your back, we don't know what's going on. And I'm like, I don't know what's going on either. Yeah. And um, I, I'm not doing a great job of what I would do with and somebody if perfect no just keep knowing, fighting uh, i knowing your story and being you know your advocate and your caregiver is uh, i come from a family where everybody kind of lays everything out on the table there's not a whole lot of secrets and so i didn't understand keeping some things private and not explaining all of it but then i couldn't help like you said you keep yourself hidden nobody can truly love you for who you are because they don't know who you are and so That's my, my thing would, I mean, I don't, I've never been in your shoes, but it would like share the whole story because that's you and that's where you're showing up. But I get the other side. But after decades of getting crushed and people second guessing you and the people out there yeah. that are like, yeah, yeah I'm going to, I just want to crawl in a hole and I'm done. And yes, I'd given up. I'd had my dad mm -hmm. ask me a couple of times when I was young, young and more in, in high school, say, are, are you, are you going to knock yourself off? You're going to kill yourself. And I, I looked at him and said, no, no, um, I, you know, to each his own, but, um, I, I, you know, that's a pretty hardcore question to ask a kid. And, yeah. um, in my mind, it was, no, I'm running this out until I, yeah. until I figure it out or die trying. Um, not exactly the point you're getting at, but- No, that's perfect. That's so, out there. Um, so perfect. What do you think Burkett was? Because I hear this and this is the thing I see in you and I see in actually a lot of the, the characters in the movie. Um, is this this resilience, this will that you are not going to be 
taken out, even if it's really hard. What do you think that is? Like, what is it in you that kept you going? You know, you talk about connection to God, universe, this, that. I mean, there's the, you're very religious and I don't fall into that category. Do I believe in something else and synchronicities and somebody, uh, yeah, hundred percent. And I think everybody's had moments where they're like, what? Yeah. How did that happen? Like, um, it felt like there was a journey I had to go through and I probably couldn't have put it in words at all times. Um, and anybody that's like, well, that's good for you. You got, you, you know, you were able to suck, suck it up for two decades less than that but we'll call it two decades yeah. of horrific pain and trying to live a normal life at the same time what i i, feel, I knew we'd come to something at some point i just did yeah. um and it wasn't a daily thing that i knew there were days where i'm like i i walk into a doctor and, and say you know what i, I, need, I tried to stay away from all the pain medicines and all that stuff because it brings on its own bizarre stuff. And there's days where I was like, fine, hit me. I don't care anymore yeah. for the money. Um, I, that's about the best I can give you is. That's I perfect. Just, I think you're describing this really, really important mix because someone who's suffering, it's that roller coaster, right? There's days where in December, I had a day I was getting ready. I had to be, I had a place speaking, book signing. And I woke up that morning. I probably had mold in the room. It was a hotel, but I literally was like, I don't know if I can get out of bed today. I don't know if I can do this. Like, and I don't, like, I love what I do. I love my life. But the truth is like anyone who's had chronic illness has those days where you're like, I don't know if I can do this. It's not that I didn't want to live by any means. Same with you, right? There was never that. But, but then there's this deeper thing, like this deeper something inside of us. that's like, somehow I'm going to get through this. And somewhere there's going to be answers. Like you never gave up really. That's the core. Um, Alyssa, for those people, like we said, in the theater, in the premiere, we saw a lot of spouses that were either like frustrated about to give up or just had really had, you know, a difficult run of it, but also loved their spouse. What would you say to them as far as keeping on or digging deep or what has been the most powerful lesson for you in all of this? Um, I had to find my own person mm -hmm. or people who knew what we were going through and supported me and lifted me up. So I had a couple of friends who I, I was a peer bar teacher through it. And I had my front desk gal and she and I are dear friends now. And our, our husbands are friends too. And she just, she knows she knew everything. And we would have these mornings after I would be done teaching before I had to go to work where we just sit and chat and it would be like, man, this happened yesterday, or here's my big win. And they would celebrate all of it with me. But his mom was like, if I didn't have her, I don't know that I would have made it through because we were newly married. And that's a lot to take on in a new marriage, along with all the other things that you do normally in a new marriage. And because she had been through it with him in the early stages and knew some of the struggles. I, you know, I didn't share everything with her, but she was always supportive. Ah, oh, that's beautiful. So I so, think, yeah, just okay. and listening to him. It, I sometimes got in my head and my own ideas of how he should be or do or act. And he's just like, I can't do that. I can't do it all or I'm not interested in that and just taking that for what it was versus saying, well, you need to be off sugar and you need to <laughs> take all of these vitamins and right. stop eating this and do this and do this. And he's like, stop it. That's not helping me. Yeah. Yeah. And it would be hard for me to just shut up and listen. Um, bless <laughs> you. And, and just, it's beautiful even to interview and see you guys together because I do see that deep respect um, and the humanity between the two of you. And it's, it's obvious, like that there's the deep dedication. I know life isn't perfect and we all have these ups and downs, but it's just really beautiful to see you guys on screen together interacting. 
So Burke, you can share just a little or as much as you want, but I feel like what I've seen too is like, even in career, you've taken some cha changes and challenges and doing some things. What's next for you guys? What's, and again, share as little as much as you want, but I just feel like on every level, I'm seeing transformation and exciting things and, and you kind of taking even your work hours and situations and making a beautiful thing out of that. Do you want to share anything about Burke's? Yeah, real quickly. And I think I just, so my whole life, we, we, we boiled it down to, I have been in survival mode for my entire adult life and the beginning, uh, the end of my childhood into the early, so yeah. entire adult life. And then prior to that in survival mode. So I only know survival and I'm really good at absolutely running myself down to the ground or enduring, 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 enduring. And this summer had a, had a broke a tendon on a wrist breaking into a stick in half for dogs <laughs> that had me in for some surgery and I had a work situation where uh, lots big money stuff um, lots of big things accomplished I was running myself ragged exactly the opposite of what I need to be doing but y'all you have to make money you have to yeah, live yeah, I, yeah. <laughs> you know unless the lottery or the the unknowing trust comes in uh -huh. uh, i i did do sort of a mic drop with my last group and um and i wish them well they, they sold the company didn't say a lot to me but it was the most beautiful thing because it was um universe god gets theirs gallops there so whoever you want to say it saying hey yo go and I ran out dropped it all looked at Alyssa and said i am going to fall flat on my face we're gonna i'm going on my own i it is gonna be ugly and beautiful and terrible and awesome and i don't know how to do this and um even the family that supported me all along initially was sort of like what and um so fast forward, I was driving up the street or uh, down the way on a 36 acre build, watching the two dogs go up the, the street that was just, I mean, sorry, the road that was just cut and I'm driving it to see how it drives if we can get machinery on there. And um, these two dogs are running in front and I've got a half hour to do this before I go and pick up the kids. Um, Still got a little ways to go and some things we got to work through, but um, what a huge lesson to flip into life to, you know what, go for it, do it, try to I things. love and that so much. That's what I'm going to so, share. I want to share for those people listening, you're in Vail and you are, tell me exactly what are you doing? So if people are listening, they might be like, hey, Burke, I need, I need you to help me on a project. I want people to know about what you do and share that. So What's your company and what do you do? Builder Construction. We, we have Bell Custom Homes and I've got a consultancy with Conic Builders that's a national group. And it's uh, it's it's sort of, we're sort of seeing how that's all working. And there's some neat projects in the works and things are sort of coming together. And I got a chance to sort of take a breath um, at the expense of finances and stuff like that. But it's all something that she and I bonded together to go, you know what? this will work out. And um, I have no cool. doubt because the same tenacity and everything that you've just shared with us is going to be there. And that's why I know people already love you guys. And, and uh, I want people to know if they can support you in any way, where could they find you? Do you have any information on the web right now? Or you, yeah, the companies are so new that okay. um, you got that, it. That not as much. Stay tuned. Uh, we'll share. <laughs> well, I, you know, yeah. Burke at Bell custom is Perfect. the current email address so b u r k l custom homes.com b u r k e yep say that again. Yeah. b u r k e at veil custom homes.com got it and we'll share that if you're listening anywhere you're listening um just in case you want a custom home in veil call burke <laughs> so <laughs> um awesome you guys it is always a pleasure thank you for diving deep with me today we could we could talk for hours <laughs> yeah, we could <laughs> but the movie's out so if you're there and you want to go see it you can go to uh drpatientmovie.com drpatientmovie.com you can see it now rent it purchase it 
And I just want to say, like, if it's touched uh, you guys, like, share with us comments, anything that you have to say, and also share it with those you love, if they're suffering or there's someone out there that you know. Um, and we're all excited because it's been a long time and here it's finally out. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Absolutely awesome. So thank you for, yeah, again, I've said this many times, it's, I believe it's in the documentary and movie, but thank you to you, Dr. Jill, and to you, Alyssa, for for saving my life so yeah, we're grateful and thank you Burke for enriching our lives appreciate you guys so much